So consider the following function. Honestly, I would rewrite this so that it is in a format that is just a little more pleasing to the eye. So I'll reverse the order of the terms in the denominator. And then what I can do is I can factor out a negative from the terms in the denominator. And furthermore, I can kick out the negative. I can kick out the negative to the front. So I essentially have the following, a negative ratio where that's the numerator and this is the denominator. Now I know, I'll just call it y. I know that it's tempting to uh, call upon the rules from pre-calc where you're like, hey, the, the degree of the top and the degree of the bottom, are they the same? Is the top win, is the bottom win? You compare the degrees, right? But there, there's an issue here. Those rules from pre-calc pertained primarily to polynomials, which these are not. These are exponential functions. So those three rules that are popular in pre-calc, those are out the door. <laughs> this is something else entirely. It's a different type of animal and it behaves in different ways. But we do want the horizontal asymptotes. Now there's one thing that we should remind ourselves about and that is horizontal asymptotes, they, they tend to manifest themselves as you branch out. And you know, not just to the right, but also to the left. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna send x to infinity and we'll see what happens. And then once I'm done with that investigation, I'm gonna send x to negative infinity and we'll see what happens there. You see, I wanna go to the right and I wanna go to the left. So how about we take the limit? The limit as x approaches infinity of that ratio. Just go like this, like that, like this. So let's see what happens here. I'll just put parentheses. So x is a huge number. If I plug in a huge number here and a huge number there, if I add three and I subtract one, if we're talking about billions, adding $3 and subtracting $1, bro, we're pretty much the same, right? So if we're talking about a huge number, then these minuscule constants, they lose their influence. And you're essentially left with, now th this is sort of bad notation, right? We're, we're essentially just left with this, right? As X approaches a huge number, we're, we're essentially just left with this because these numbers, they become irrelevant and we can agree that these knock out. So you're left with negative one. That's why x equals negative one is one of the answers. So again, this notation is very improper. I'm just putting my thoughts on this paper. Now, how about here? Let's, let's see what happens when x goes to negative infinity. And just FYI, what you could have done in the previous problem, you could have kicked out the negative there, no consequence. Uh, you could let's just do that here. So that negative put it out there and now it's gone. So now let's see we're sending x off to become a very deep negative. So what I'd essentially get is a negative, and then I'd get four to the negative infinity plus three over four to the negative infinity minus one. Now what's four to the negative infinity? Well, let's see, four, four just some scratch work here, four to the negative infinity, that's one over four to the infinity, which is one over a huge number. If you have one over huge, that is essentially zero. Imagine taking $1 and dividing it among the population of the world. Everyone gets nothing, <laughs> right? So what I'm saying is that is basically zero. That is basically zero. And then you have negative, negative three. So you have positive three, right? The double negatives. So that is how you get your two horizontals. You consider the positive case and the negative case. Again, I apologize for the bad notation. Also, I think this 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 method, I think this is more numerical because you're, you're plugging in numbers, right? You're picking numbers and you're plugging it into there. Maybe your teacher would want something where you pick a table of values and you pick bigger and bigger values of X and you see what happens to the Y. So I think that this was more of a numerical approach, an algebraic approach. You might have to do one of those one of those fancy techniques where you multiply top and bottom by like one over four to the X. So there's all kinds of craziness that you can do. I'll leave it to your teacher to decide how to do that. But there you are. I hope that helped.